Hello everybody, my name is Kip Creed, and today I'll be addressing the Oriental Dumpster Fire, or as you may know it, the How Long Heater. Putting things out there right from the start, the How Long Heater is, at least in my opinion, the worst primary for heavy. However, here's my disclaimer. If you disagree with me or like to use it, that's fine. I'll provide my argument and explanation, but this is simply to explain why I personally don't use or like it, so don't think I'm attacking anyone over this. So let's begin. I'll start off by saying I think there's two main problems with the how long. Firstly, it suffers what I'll call Brasby syndrome. And secondly, like many people my age, including myself, it has no idea what to do with itself. Now let's take a look at the stats and see what the problem is. The how long heater while spun up creates a ring of fire, but at the cost of 4 ammo per second and a 10% damage penalty, but it gains a 25% damage bonus on burning opponents. The Ring of Fire is interesting, coming in half second pulses that do 12 damage ramping up to 15 and causes 10 seconds of afterburn. But it's a redundant deterrent to anyone that comes close to you and can help detect spies and block chokes except that it has no vertical reach, allowing it to be easily jumped and that's assuming you don't simply time the slow pulses to pass or simply don't get point blank to the heavy as the rings don't have much reach in the first place. Even when an opponent is actually in the flames, the damage is hardly enough to be worried about and it does little to actually force opponents away. The 10% damage penalty is, well, a damage penalty. It's not much, but it's enough to make the how long just that much less sustainable in combat, especially at mid to long range. If an opponent is on fire, you do get a 25% damage bonus coming up to a net gain of 15% extra damage, which allows you to absolutely melt opponents at point blank, or help clean up ignited opponents. But even in the Jungle Inferno's pyro influx, that's not all that common of an occurrence. And then there's the extra ammo consumption, which makes the Howling Heater a short-lived weapon, literally burning through ammo at a highly rapid rate, meaning that if you plan to truly hold the line and do any good in longer exchanges, you'll have to stick your own cards, dispensers, and ammo packs just to have a chance. Looking at the stats as a whole, it's easy to see the particularly strong case of Brass B Syndrome. The upsides are lackluster and the downsides are harsh, making a weapon that truly doesn't have benefits that are worth the costs to use. But this particular strain of Brass B Syndrome is particularly virulent, especially once you start to consider that every single stat works against itself, producing two ineffectual ways to handle the How Long Heater. The first way is to utilize the firing and damage bonus to sneak up on opponents, drop on them, and melt them down. This is a very flank heavy style and often leads to overextension. The heavy is by no means a stealthy class and utilizing this style may lead to a few picks but will be quickly countered and punished, especially considering how short lived the how long heater is when you have to deal with the rest of the enemy team responding to your reckless invasion. And then the second way is the more stereotypical one, the cart rider. This heavy will stick to carts, dispensers, and ammo packs, leading their movements to be extremely predictable and will usually engage at mid to long, where the firing is useless and the damage penalty is severely hampering. Neither of these strats work in the long run, because the conflicting stats just hold back the how long from truly shining in any situation. In fact, Everything the heavy needs to do, there's a minigun already built for it. Want to ride the card or hold a strong positioning? The Brass Beast has the power to do that. Even for all of its faults, it works better. Wants close range power and the ability to shut down chokes and pull some area denial? The Natasha works wonders for that. Wants to flank and surprise opponents? The Tommy Slap is a great op option for that, allowing you to be highly mobile, silent, stealthy, and just have complete superiority in 1v1 situations. And do you want a good, sustainable, all-around weapon that is good in any situation you put in? Use the stock. Now, how would we go about fixing this? I'm not entirely sure. The problem is with the How Long Heaters concept is it's one that is interesting, it's a fun gimmick, but it's never something that I've ever thought, huh, I would actually have needed this in this situation. Its design is a gimmick and the conflicting stats don't quite apply themselves to any real given situation. 
However, I do have one idea that kind of switches up how it would be used, making it into a body block weapon, allowing it to be more of a just kind of sit in an area and block people out. And I think that would make it much more usable and much more applicable to what the heavy would want to use this for. So my idea would be to give the firings vertical reach so they cannot be jumped. Also make them reach just short of sword range, that way only sword range melee weapons can reach the heavy unscathed, allowing no one to come into point blank without taking some serious heat. Give the firings about 20 to 25 damage per hit and make them deal knockback to push back anyone trying to close in on the heavy. I think these changes alone would make it good enough to be worth using, but I'd like to hear more from you guys. All in all, the Howlung Heater has some fun gimmicks, but in its current state, it really isn't worth using for much more than a really inefficient stock. It's the worst pr primary in the Heavy's arsenal, at least in my book. And it's not to say it's unusable, just inefficient. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.